How do you practice to get to Carnegie Hall? Advice to students using the Liviano method for developing a musical ear. Part 1. What are the three stages of learning music? The following is a public service announcement for young artists, music teachers, parents, and visually impaired people. The mission of my work is to make it easy to learn music for millions of children around the world who lack access to quality music education training and manuals. This is my contribution to helping young people everywhere. If you are listening to this material, then you have already taken the first step towards joining the world's high-performance musicians. The most important thing every student can control are the amount and quality of practice he or she applies to a specific problem. There is a famous anecdote. A tourist on the streets of New York asks a passerby, How do I get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, 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 responds the New Yorker. I would rephrase the answer, prepare, practice, and after practice. These are the three stages of learning music. Knowing that you have to practice is only the beginning of the journey. How to practice is exactly what I will discuss with you today so you can really get to Carnegie Hall, Juilliard, or Broadway as an accomplished artist in any genre of music. With this in mind, I will share with you my thoughts on how and why anyone that has a strong desire and willingness to work hard and smart can develop a phenomenal musical ear and become a world-class musician. Part 1. What are the three stages of learning music? The three stages of learning music are preparation, practice, and after practice. Let's talk about preparation. 1. Getting mentally and physically ready for your practice is just as important as the practice itself. 2. The student needs to be rested, motivated, and with a strong belief that he or she can succeed in mastering the material at hand. This stage is also known as the self-efficacy moment since it sets up the proper chemical reactions for the actual practice. 3. If you start in a good mood, then the learning practice will be more efficient and evident in the results to follow. 4. Self-regulation centers on the attitudes and beliefs of the student. If you think you can, you can. And if you think you cannot, you are right, said Henry Ford. 5. Start with a good attitude and everything will happen in your favor. This type of attitude requires a high level of personal motivation. 6. Best performers go into their work with a powerful belief called self-efficacy, the ability to succeed. Now let's talk about the second stage, practice. 7. During the practice, the student should focus intensely on their activity. Listen, sing, repeat. 8. The student should be able to step outside of himself during the practice and monitor what is happening. Am I in tune? What is happening in my mind? And ask, how is it going? 9. Scientists call this form of self-perception metacognition, knowledge about knowledge, or thinking about thinking. 10. The student should think in a systematic way about what he is doing and establish it as part of the routine. 11. Metacognition, the ability to observe your own thinking, is very helpful because, as situations change throughout the practice, it helps the student adapt to new sets of problems and respond accordingly. 12. Metacognition also helps in finding practicing opportunities in areas that are not yet mastered. For example, a particular chord or melodic pattern. 13. Students that can apply metacognition to their practice observe and monitor their own thinking process and ask what abilities are being taxed right now or can I try another skill to solve this problem. 14. Applying metacognition in sync with the practice is not easy. It takes a lot of patience and concentration. And now the last stage of your practice called post-practice. 15. After the practice, the student should reflect and analyze how the practice went. 16. Think about specific issues that you worked on today and feel that you have understood better today. 17. The student should compare himself to his own best or others if in a classroom setting. 18. Students 
should choose comparison margins that go beyond the comfortable limits of sound recognition and include deep knowledge data. For example, this major triad belongs in several scales with a different tonal function and so on. And 19. Top students do not blame others for their mistakes and take ownership of their own limitations. One more thing. Keeping things simple and clear is a key element of the Liviano method for ear training and sight singing. Please remember, learning music starts with singing and dedicated practice makes perfect. Have fun and sing the music. If you have questions, ideas or comments, send me an email to david at liviano.com. Liviano is spelled L-I-V-I-A-N-U. I would love hearing from you. Thank you for listening. I wish you great results and good luck on your road to success. This is David Liviano. The 32 lessons in audio format, together with the free PDF manuals, can be streamed or downloaded from Google Play, Amazon or iTunes by searching in the Google browser 32 Lessons for Ear Training and Sight Singing by David Liviano. A PDF transcript of this audio is available for download at Google Play Books. You can find it by googling the title Part 1. What are the three stages of learning music?